That's better. Thank you. Glorious. No, I won't give in. I won't give in till I'm victorious. Hello, everyone. This is CJ Novo 982, and today we are back from the brand's new video. Today is our video. We are here to talk about a Rangers win, which is always welcome to you on the channel. But before we go any further into that win, a quick shout out to the channel sponsors and the channel legends themselves. One Football, whose link will be down there in the description below if you want a wee bit. Of Rangers news. Well, there is a smile on this face, ladies and gentlemen, and like I said, we did win the game, so let's just get on to it then, shall we? Now, did we see the big reaction that there was talked up in the press and the media before the game, where Rangers absolutely rampant from the first whistle to the last? No, but did they heat up, control the game, and come away with three points? Yes. And a Rangers win's always going to make a smile appear on this face, whether it does reach our expectations or not. And speaking about that, I know the reaction wasn't as good as a lot of people were expecting it, but I think if you look in at the game and look at a couple of key individuals, I think there were some promising performances from the Rangers players. So without any further ado, let's stop talking around the game and actually dive in and discuss Rangers 2. I forgot the team. <laughs> it was Ross County. Sorry, sorry lads, it's late. It's late. Now, early blunder from me out of the way and into the game of football. The way it started was kind of the way we've came to expect since we've come back to the winter break. A lot of possession, but a lot of sideways passing and very slow and sluggish, especially from our midfield three. And that's very disappointing, especially when you look at Scotty Arfield, because as I continually say on this channel, when he's allowed to go further forward and closer to Jermaine Defoe, magic usually happens. And the occasions where he did get forward and he did get closer to Jermaine Defoe, magic happened. But before we get to the first bit of magic in the game of football, let's talk about a couple of people who did actually start the game very well and the first name that comes to mind right away has to be Matty P, Team USA. Matt Polster. Building on that performance that he did in the second half versus Hearts, he came in at this game of football and he was just, just so positive on the ball, going forward, willing to beat a man, willing to try to beat a man and willing to just get a ball in the box early and ask questions of the defence. And I personally don't think Matt Polster's impact in the game can be stated enough. He was so vital, especially within the first 25 to 30 minutes where it was extremely stale and congested from Rangers, very passive and very subdued. He was the one not only adding energy to the team, but energy to the fans as well because just seeing a guy running and getting stuck in and when he does make a mistake, no just turning his head down and facing away or slowly jogging back. He was willing to chase down his own mistake, get stuck in and try to win the ball back. He was adding so much energy to this team and it bled completely down that right hand side because the man in front of him, Ojo, who started to the surprise of quite a lot of people was also very, very good in this game. Now I know so many people didn't like this lad and so many people want Ojo out of this football club but can you honestly tell me from looking at that game of football that laddie doesn't have something. He just like Matt Poster was one of the few people in a ranger shot that when he got the ball was positive every single time he got the ball. Whether I was trying to beat a man and having a shot from range or trying to beat a man and slip someone or just going down the wing and trying to whip in an early cross. Down the right hand side had so much energy and it was the bright spark throughout the majority of that first half and it's so weird to think about because they've never started with each other before but their chemistry was just so perfect and they were perfectly in sync whether the one twos in behind or even Ojo um, tracking back with Matty Poster doubling up on the fast dangerous wingers from Ross County. I was sitting back thinking this doesn't make any sense. How are they so in sync? And by the way, I'm not sitting here saying that Ojo was an absolute world beater in this game and he was simply incredible. All I'm saying is both him and Matty Poster was a positive spark for Rangers all night doing that right hand side. That's the best it's been since Tavernier has been out injured. They came into this game with a point to prove and in my opinion, both of them proved it. But there was a wee bit of magic that was teased earlier on in today's video. Now, despite a lot of chances and the majority of chances being created down that right hand side, especially from the right through of Polster who was whipping balls in there all damn day. The first goal and the absolute vital goal actually was created down the left hand side through BB as always. It gets to the byline, he whips a dangerous ball in. The, the Ross County defender sort of just swoops it in the air, Arfield next to Jermaine Defoe, as we continue to talk about on this channel, is up there. He's battling with the defender. He ends up getting to the header the second time of asking. Now, he headers it to Jermaine Defoe inside the box, right? Defoe has two defenders on him. One defender trying to rip the shirt off him. He takes one touch with his knee, and then facing this way, 
he shoots the ball so perfectly on the half volley and smashes it into the back of the net. Absolute incredible goal. He's got no right to score from that angle. But that's exactly what happens when you actually get the ball to Jermaine Defoe inside the box. Magic can and usually happens. A phenomenal goal scorer and he reminded everyone that with that finish. So delighted it was him that broke the deadlock because there's been a hell of a lot of questions since Hearts questioning this man who's scoring goals at a phenomenal rate from Rangers saying he can't play against defensive teams this and this. No, what he can't do is live of absolute nothing in scraps. When we supply him with the ball, he puts the ball in at the back of the net. He now has 25 goals and 50 appearances from Rangers and the majority of them have been off the bench. Phenomenal player, he's still got it. But with Jermaine Defoe being that man for Rangers, we make it to half-time 1-0 up versus a very sturdy, hard-working Ross County team knowing that one more goal will see this game done. And boy did Rangers come out that second half hungry to kill off this game. Learning from the mistake of Hearts on Dillian on the ball when they did get the lead. Straight from that whistle at the second half they were hungry knowing that they needed that goal and that would finish it off. Well ladies and gentlemen we got it within 120 seconds of the second half starting through the best bit of football we've seen in quite a long time. And it just had to start from the right foot of Matty Poster passing directly into Shea Ojo. That connection we've already spoken about started this goal off and when the ball came to Ojo he took one touch and he was sprinting it infield committing defenders and creating space for others to run and now he passes a fantastic ball into Jermaine Defoe now Jermaine Defoe's touch pass is simply on the money once again showing when Arfield is next to Jermaine Defoe their understanding is on a complete and utter level his touch pass in first time Arfield's already making the run it's equally brilliant from the pass to the run and the finish isn't bad either as Scotty Arfield makes it two and wraps up the game with the best bit of football like I said in a while. And I'm just going to be honest with you lads, it's been rough watching Rangers since back from the winter break but that showed signs that the penny had finally dropped. Arfield next to the foe just like the end of last season works and creates opportunity. We had just started to play like it and over the next couple of minutes we started creating chances once again and that's actually how Jermaine Defoe go in behind the defence with a fantastic ball over the top. He's in with one defender on him but he pulls up, stops running right away and signals to come off. And that right there just sums it up. Just when we're clicking and we're firing for the first time since the winter break, Jermaine Defoe is injured and has to leave the park on a stretcher. Now, thankfully, Steven Gerrard, since the game has ended, has clarified that it's his calf and not his hamstring. So the injury may not be as bad as first expected and he may not be missing for as long as first expected. But again, fingers crossed, Jermaine Defoe is back and we see him playing for Rangers soon. Now, as you can imagine, losing one of your best players up to that point is going to affect the team and just slow things down a little bit. Now, we were forced into making a couple of changes, as you can imagine. The first one was trying Ojo up top for about five minutes because we had to give Alfredo Morales a longer warm-up than normal because he is also nursing a calf injury, so we just didn't want to throw him in right away in case we injured Alfredo Morelos and thank God that never happened because if I had to sit here and talk about both Jermaine Defoe and Alfredo Morelos being missing, honestly, Richard Gere. That's what I would look like with these greys. Now, despite not scoring another goal, I still saw a lot of positives from Rangers in that second half. I thought Joe Rebo came on and played very well with the ball at his feet. I thought Alfredo Morelos for when he was involved was Alfredo Morelos, you know what I mean? You had a chip that was just unbelievable just to have the balls to try that from that angle missing by about that and then he showed his rust later on in the game around about the 85th minute where he fired wide where usually he would hit the target he was all action whenever he did get the ball but we controlled we managed the game we came through it without any further injuries we got the three points kept the clean sheet and that for me is a positive. And I think that right there is a perfect place to end the game recap on my side of things. Now, before I hand the reins over to you guys, this is usually where I discuss the individual player performances, but as you've already saw throughout today's video, we've discussed that. My three best players on the park were Matty Pulsar, Ojo, and Scotty, Scotty Arfield. And a wee shout out to Connor Golton as well. He was a captain once again with Tav near being out, and he played like a captain, no compromising. He was a leader. He was screaming at everyone. He was constantly demanding more. And again, quietly, having another very strong performance from Rangers at centre half. But with all that being said, I am all done and dusted with today's video. Now it's over to you guys watching today's video. What did you think of the game? What did you think about the performance? Let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section below. And while you guys are doing that, we'll jump over to Twitter and here 
from the people. Now there's been 1,846 votes, thank you so much for getting involved. 2% votes for Allah, 14% votes for Ojo, 25% votes for Arfield, but the far and away winner with 59% of the people's vote is Matty, Matty P, and boy, do we love to see that. Honestly, it was if he had heard that the two Super Bowl teams this weekend were looking for an extra player. That's how much effort he put into that. He was bloody everywhere, and I completely agree with the 59%. Of the vote. Deacon Neal was the first one in, as always, and he writes in, although Polster and Ojo were good and linked up very well tonight, I'm picking Scotty Arfield. Good to see him back doing Arfield things. Arfield things happen when we play him up. Adam Skate Gaming writes in, Polster had a great game and a good determination altogether. Good performance from Rangers. Snake Harper writes in, Matty P impressed again getting forward and in possession. Not a pretty performance, but three points is the main thing. Defoe's injury is definitely a worry though. Blue Sea of Ibrox writes in, wasn't it the best performance but 2-0 and a clean sheet? We will take that. Defoe saved us in the first half and got the team going. Poster was good tonight. I like how he got stuck in and was up and down the flank all day. Roll on the sheep at the weekend. Thomas Lee writes in, USA, USA, USA. Enjoyed the Defoe and Arfield partnership. Defoe injured though is a worry. Alfred Comarelos writes in, Ojo, positive every time he got the ball, beat his man multiple times, created a couple of good chances. More of that, please, Ojo. Andrew Wilson writes in, Polster, 100% man of the match for me. He barely got a decent ball all game, but he was constantly delivering great balls into the box. Gutted that Defoe got injured, but it might give Gerard and the board the incentive to go ahead and get a new striker. Ref was a joke all night as well. Standard, mate. Absolute standard. Callum Rankin writes in, Ojo, brilliant today. Always went after his man the whole game, even though he kept getting hacked by the county players. And the last one we'll read out in tonight's video, right, it comes in from Kevin Wakeham, and he writes in, has to be Polster. Played brilliant balls into the box, plus he works his arse off to win back uh, when he did lose the ball. Think we now have our backup right back, CJ. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. You've heard from the people. You've heard from myself. You may have even heard from Rocky, depending on the barks, if they made the mic or not. If you haven't done so already, you know what to do by now. But as always, I've been CJ92. Thank you so much for watching and bye bye.